Mr. Speaker, um, Admiral Mullen was, was asked uh, at a hearing what he thought the greatest threat to national security was. His response was powerful, simple, and very clear. He said, the greatest threat to our national security is our national debt. I would add that it's not just a threat to our security, it's a threat to our prosperity. It's a threat to the blessings of liberty and opportunity for our children. It is a threat to domestic tranquility. There is not a greater threat that looms larger on the horizon. There's not a greater challenge in this 21st century and for my generation than the potential and the prospects of a sovereign debt crisis. We have no doubt experienced an unprecedented public health and, uh, and uh, economic disaster as a result of the pandemic. But if we don't commit to reducing our national debt, we will indeed face a crisis far graver than what could come out of this pandemic. We've experienced the largest generational retirement in history, runaway health care costs, record spending, discretionary, non-defense and defense, all have amassed a whopping $1 trillion in debt. This is pre-COVID. That is $1 trillion in annual deficit spending, spending a $1 trillion more on our nation's priorities and our budget over what we have to spend. And we've done that year in and year out to the, to the tune now of a $23 trillion debt and climbing. This is pre-COVID, I want to remind you. Prior to COVID and the trillions of dollars that we're spending, we were on course to spend more to service our debt to bondholders like China than all of our national defense combined in less than 10 years. Now, the CBO has projected that we will add almost $4 trillion to our national debt by the end of this fiscal year. And as a result, um, we put ourselves in a very, very tenuous position. And we will exceed, Mr. Speaker, our, our debt per the size of our economy as it was in World War II, which was the largest debt position we ever held. So we will set uh, a, a very dangerous precedent for the next generation. We will put them in a very, very bad position. And so Scott Peters and I got 30 Democrats and 30 Republicans, and we picked a few budget reforms that would put us in a place and force Congress to reduce our debt and hand this country in a better fiscal position for our children. And we sent a letter with these three uh, initiatives and reforms to our leadership. And we are imploring all of our colleagues and leadership from both houses, please seize this opportunity to include these budget process reforms so that when we get through this crisis, we won't have to endure the ultimate crisis. And we will not, Mr. Speaker, be able to bail out of that, print money, borrow enough. It will be a disaster of epic proportion. So I implore my colleagues to please support budget process reforms in this next COVID legislation. And thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back.